Okay, we are uh, in the process of disassembling uh, the VW engine and we are pulling the pistons out. So we've already got several of the pistons out. We're down to the last one. I wanted to show you the process of taking these pistons out. Now on an engine like this where you've got a separate sleeve and a piston, it's not going to come out like a regular conventional engine. That's kind of what I wanted to show you. On these, if you look on the inside here, you've got a snap ring that goes inside here and you pull that snap ring out and then the wrist pin slides out and then the piston comes off. And once the piston is off, you have the connecting rod down here that's attached to the crankshaft and then you can take the connecting rod off from the crankshaft. So let's go ahead and pull this piston out. <laughs> And we are keeping track of which pins come out of what and what piston goes in where and all that kind of stuff. So you just push the, this is the connecting rod that he's pushing out of the, or sorry, the wrist pin that's coming, that he's pushing out of the connecting rod. And that holds the piston up. And there you go. Okay, we're going to measure the piston skirt and we're going to use a micrometer first. I'm going to do a separate video or put you to a YouTube video to actually show you how to read a micrometer. But when you put a micrometer on the piston, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're in the center of the piston. So straight across the center. And then when you um, tighten up the jaws of the, the micrometer, there is a clutch on there that once you get it snug, then you run the clutch up and then you lock the, the jaws. And then you can remove the caliper off and read the the measurement and so there's the the measurement right there and it comes out to 3.659 on uh, on the micrometer there is another way you can measure the piston skirt and that's with the dial cat or with a, a caliper if you have a caliper um, so and it's basically basically measuring it the same way so we're going to put the caliper across the skirt of the piston and roll it up and there's the measurement there it is I can't read it from here 3.661 so 3.661 so you can see they're very close now as far as these two instruments themselves go I would probably trust this micrometer a little more than I would trust this one, simply because this one was purchased at Harbor Freight. They're good micrometers, but sometimes they do vary a little bit in their accuracy. And so I've seen several YouTube videos and stuff where they've done comparisons between... It's important to zero them out first. Yes, important to zero out the micrometers first. But I've seen some comparison contrast on some of these micrometers where uh, the Harbor Freight does come up a little bit short sometimes. always good to measure it maybe more than once two or three times just to make sure you're coming up with a consistent reading so 3.65 or 665 so it went up just a little bit so so since we got two different readings what I would do is do a third reading and see if we get come up with one of the the readings again uh, I usually try and measure enough times that I come up with some consistent readings each time. Okay, on this one, the piston, we're, we're getting ready to assemble the piston. We're putting some assembly lube inside of the barrel or the cylinder on this. And so it's really important that you get some luber lubrication in there before you actually put the piston in the cylinder. So we've got it all lubed up. And the assembly lube that we're using is basically just a uh, heavy weight oil. You can use a white lithium grease. There's Luber plate works really well. It's almost a, a very, very light white grease. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter what you use for assembly. You can actually use just regular engine oil if you're just going to put the engine right back in the car. So the first thing we need to do is we need to compress the piston rings. And so this is a ring compressor. You put, place it on the piston like so. And then we crank it down and compress the rings. Uh, 
And it's really, really important that we get this tightened down as just as absolutely tight as you can possibly get it to get those rings compressed all the way into the piston. So if we look at the bottom, see there's no gaps around the bottom. And if we look at the top, there's no gaps inside there. So we've got the piston compressed really, really well. Now to put the piston in the, in the cylinder, we need to orient it correctly. And there is a arrow on the end of the piston that shows which direction is the front of the engine. And so we've got it oriented correctly. And then when we do this, we're just going to use the handle of the, of the hammer and we're going to set it right on top of the piston and with a very sharp, just kind of a really quick thumb, we'll push the piston all the way down in. Did we get it in? No. Okay, so we missed on that one, so we're going to have to take it apart and do it again. So we just took the ring compressor off and you can see we got one compression ring that didn't quite make it in there. So we didn't have the piston ring compressor quite tight enough. So we got to push that piston back out and recompress the rings and try again. Okay, we added a little bit more lube in the cylinder. Sometimes if you don't get quite enough lubrication in there, it may not go all the way in. So we'll snap it down in there this time. There we go. And that's in. <laughs> Gave it more than I needed. So... And that's how you put a piston in the cylinder.